Okay, self-isolating sixth graders, let's do week seven, part one. This is the uh, preview to chapter three, lesson six, which is the last section of chapter three. So we are now going to be done with chapter three. All right, so uh, the earth is going through constant change. Um, uh, there's a lot of different factors at play, whether it's the plates moving or weathering and erosion or... Um, any of the processes that we've been looking at for the last couple of weeks. Um, that means that some of the rocks that we uh, see are several millions of years old. Uh, did, for example, the rocks in Cincinnati are all, you know, tens of millions of years old. Um, but because the rock cycle is constantly going on, that means that there's brand new rocks. And that means that there's rocks that were made like, you know, last Tuesday or even today. Um, there are three major categories that we have reviewed. Uh, it is the igneous, the sedimentary, and the metamorphic rocks. Um, igneous rocks, if you remember, are rocks that uh, come from liquid rock material solidifying, and it can be intrusive, um, like this rock here. You can see because it's of the very clear mineral grains, or it can be extrusive where it has very fine mineral grains or even these large frozen bubbles um, that show that this solidified very, very quickly. Here be a intrusive igneous rock. Uh, I'm sorry, extrusive igneous rock uh, because it's got very small mineral grains and it's very light colored and that makes it um, be... Uh, uh, granitic. And then there are uh, your um, basaltic rocks that are very, very dark colored because they're very high in metals. So igneous rocks come in a wide variety of colors and textures because of where they were formed and what they were formed out of. Um, sedimentary rock has the uh, dead giveaway of being stacked in layers like this. Uh, places like the Grand Canyon are excellent examples of that. Um, in order to see sedimentary rocks, we need some weathering and erosion to kind of expose everything. And then finally, we have the metamorphic rocks, which are rocks made from um, other rocks uh, having heat or pressure applied to them, sometimes fluids, and that it's going to change their form, composition, or both. Even something like a diamond technically is a metamorphic rock. Um, they can be foliated or non-foliated, uh, depending on what their mineral grain arrangement ends up being, whether it's parallel or not. So there are nine scenarios uh, in the rock cycle. And the big idea is that any kind of rock can become any kind of rock. Um, uh, as we go through these nine scenarios, uh, you'll see that the way to become a rock is um, uh, always going to be the same. So there's only going to be one real way to make an igneous rock, but it can come from three different possibilities. Um, so let's start off with igneous rock. Now, igneous rock can become any one of three different types of rock. In order for igneous to make sedimentary rock, it has to go through weathering and erosion. That's going to create your sediments. And then those sediments will go through deposition, compaction, and cementation. And now you've got igneous to sedimentary. Igneous rock can also become metamorphic rock. And the only way to have metamorphic rock created is for heat pressure fluid to be applied. And that's going to change its form or composition or both. Igneous rock can also become brand new and different igneous rock. Uh, the only way to make igneous rock is for uh, lava or magma to solidify. So for igneous rock to become new and different igneous rock, the very first thing that has to happen is melting. So old igneous rock has to be remelted, and then once it cools and solidifies, um, it can form new igneous rock. All right, sedimentary rock can become uh, any one of the other three kinds of rock. So the only way to get igneous rock is for sedimentary rock to become molten. And then when it uh, solidifies, it can form new igneous rock. Metamorphic rock is always created the same way. Heat pressure fluid is going to be applied to the sedimentary rock. And that's going to change its form or composition. And then finally, sedimentary rock to make new and different sedimentary rock. Well, 
sedimentary rock has to be created first. Then that current sedimentary rock has to go through weathering and erosion, and then compaction and cementation of the sediments, and then you have new sedimentary rock. All right, there's six of the nine. Uh, metamorphic rock can become any one of the three. So metamorphic to sedimentary, well, the only way to make sedimentary uh, out of metamorphic rock is for weathering and erosion to create sediments and then compaction and cementation. Hopefully you're getting the pattern here. Metamorphic rock to make igneous, well, the only way to make igneous rock is out of liquid rock, so metamorphic rock has to melt. Then once it is melted, it can solidify and that's going to give us igneous rock out of metamorphic rock. And then finally, metamorphic rock to new and different metamorphic rock. You get heat pressure or fluid. That's going to act on old metam metamorphic rock. And that's going to change its former composition and give us brand new and different metamorphic rock. So any kind of rock can become any kind of rock. And that gives us nine possibilities. If you think way, way back to the first quarter, conservation of matter was uh, that in any kind of change, the total amount of matter remains the same. Matter is not created, matter is not destroyed. So as far as how that applies to the rock cycle, well, as any kind of rock becomes any kind of rock, the total amount of atoms and the types of atoms that they are always remains the same. They're just being rearranged or, change, or uh, changing states or something like that, but the total amount and type of atoms remains the same. So we have conservation of matter in the rock cycle. Now, this diagram uh, does a very good job of showing that um, any kind of rock can become any kind of rock. This, if we walk through it, shows the nine possibilities and more. Um, here we even have something like coal formation, which is an organic sedimentary rock, which is um, uh, pretty different. And then um, uh, we've got uh, all of our different kinds of um, classifications if you scattered throughout. So something complicated like this will show it all. We can even do it, however, a little bit more simply in something like this. This fairly simple diagram does a pretty good job of showing a rock cycle. So in order for igneous rock to form, you need liquid rock to solidify. So here we have our liquid rock. Here we have an old magma chamber underground that is solidified. So here we have intrusive igneous rock. If this um, magma comes out as lava and then solidifies here, these mountains here were made um, extrusively by lava solidifying. Um, here we have weathering, and then, then that's going to create our sediments, which will erode and then kind of stack up down here. And then um, as layers and layers of this get compacted and cemented, we can get sedimentary rock out of the igneous rock. Um, metamorphic rock is going to happen um, near this area here, where it's deep underground and near a good heat source. Um, so uh, the... The rock cycle does not have to be as complicated this as this. This is way more thorough, but even something like this can show it. Uh, here's a silly uh, rock humor joke. Name the three kinds of rock. And for those of you who like music, the three kinds of rock are not igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. They are classic punk and hard. All right. Uh, still no book work. Answer the five questions. And yeah, let's uh, keep week seven fairly easy for now. But uh, oh, real quick. Um, let's see. I almost forgot. From a uh, freshly shaved Mr. Bogdan. Bye bye.